Howdy folks, it's me, Josh. After wanting to take a step back from alternate history, I decided to look into some historical details that interested me and that I thought would be fun to make a video about. And none of these stood out to me as much as the insane antics of one Timothy Dexter, whose sheer dumb luck and all-around wackiness stands out just as much to us today as it did to people back in his time. Born in 1747, Timothy Dexter didn't have much going for him, if anything. He was born into a poor family and dropped out of school when he was 8 years old. That's the equivalent of someone dropping out of second grade. However, he ended up getting an apprenticeship in leatherwork, which he held until he was 14. When he finished his apprenticeship, he was given a nice suit called a freedom suit, which, of course, Dexter decided to sell for eight bucks. Oh no, excuse me, eight bucks and 20 cents. Big difference. He managed to scrounge up enough money to move to Newburyport in 1767 and set up a shop in the house of his new wife, an older and wealthier widow named Elizabeth, and largely sold leather goods. And this is how things stayed for about 20 years. But then, Dexter made the first in a long series of ridiculous financial decisions. Over the 20 years he spent tirelessly working in his shop, he managed to save up thousands of dollars which he then decided to spend all of on the worthless continental currency which was used in the US before the ratification of the constitution. However, through a sheer stroke of dumb luck, when the US constitution was ratified in 1788, the US government decided to pay back continental currency at 1% face value. Now this would be an alright deal on its own, if it wasn't for Massachusetts, which decided to pay back the continental currency at full value, which meant that Dexter had just made extreme bank. With his new wealth, Dexter bought several ships and tried to enter into elite circles in Boston, but due to his weird demeanor and rhetoric, they rejected him time and time again. He managed to make a good few enemies through this too, who decided to try to dupe him into making dumb financial decisions. Famously, he was advised to send bed warmers, meant to warm beds during cold weather, to the Caribbean. And he actually did it. His enemies were laughing so hard, they just knew that Dexter would be fit. He made an 80% profit off of this. It was insane. The bed warmers were sold not to warm beds, but to be used as ladles in the local molasses industry. And the best part is that this kept happening. His enemies then told him to send coal to Newcastle, which was one of the greatest coal suppliers in the world. And sending coal to Newcastle was literally a phrase used to describe a stupid and worthless action. And he did it. And he made a profit because the coal miners in Newcastle just so happened to go on strike by the time the shipment arrived. His enemies then tried to get him to ship Bibles to an island in the East Indies that didn't even exist. And once again, through sheer dumb luck, his ship just so happened to get blown off course and end up in China where they just so happened to meet up with a group of missionaries who he sold the Bibles to and made a profit. And this is just scratching the surface. There are many more occasions in which sheer dumb luck managed to turn him a profit. But with his enemies sufficiently coping and seething, he ended up a very wealthy man with a big house and a ton of statues, which, of course, included one of himself, in which he described himself as the greatest philosopher in the Western world. What? But none of this was enough for Dexter, and he then decided he needed a poet too, for some reason. And so he went out into the market, found some rando selling fish, and hired him as his poet. And, of course, all of the poems were about him. A few years later, in 1802, Dexter published his own book titled A Pickle for the Knowing Ones. 
How a second grade dropout managed to write an entire book, I don't know. But I guess that's the explanation for the very, uh, interesting spelling and a grand total of zero punctuation. He started handing out the book for free, and anyone could tell that this thing was gonna be a total flop. It sold so well he reprinted it eight times. And, of course, with his book's popularity, some people just had to find a way to complain about the sheer lack of punctuation, demanding he add punctuation to the book. And so, Dexter, doing a little trolling, decided to quell their complaints by reprinting the exact same book but with a page exclusively filled with punctuation, telling the reader to pepper and salt it as they please, or, in Dexter's words, pepper and salt it as they please. Dexter would end up passing away quietly four years later, in 1806, with a legacy truly unmatched by any historical figure to date. But I guess the one thing we can all take away from this ridiculous story is that success can happen to literally anyone, whether intentional or whether through just sheer, complete, dumb luck. So thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, make sure to stick around for more. And you can also maybe subscribe or something. But that's it for now. Well, till next time. See ya.